Hi, I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson. You're watching Get Your Sax Together. And on this week's lesson, you're going to learn how to make an interesting and melodic line that connects through different chord changes. And who are you going to learn from? The very best, the one and only Sonny Rollins. Now, if I said to you, you can have a lesson from me or you can have a lesson from Sonny Rollins on playing on chord changes, what would you choose? Obviously, you're gonna choose from Sonny Rollins. But the truth of the matter is, you can learn from Sonny Rollins, Sonny Stitt, John Coltrane, Cannibal Adderley, Charlie Parker. You can learn from all the greats. You can have a lesson with them anytime you want just by transcribing their solos and checking them out. So today's lesson is for a slightly more advanced improvisers. Two weeks ago, we had a lesson which was for people who didn't know where to start with their improvising. You can go and check that one out. Then the next improvising lesson was about people who have got one scale, but ways to improve that scale. So that's the second lesson today. It's a bit more advanced. Now I'm gonna assume that you know what the notes for all the different chord types are. And maybe if I had to go improvising on some two five ones in jazz standards. Most people complain that they can't find an interesting and melodic line to connect through those different chord changes without sounding like they're either just running up and down scales or they're doing some kind of technical pattern. So I've got five fantastic Sonny Rollins phrases from his legendary solo on St. Thomas. We're gonna look at them and see how he did it. And tell me if you don't think Sonny Rollins is one of the most melodic and interesting and creative players ever to blow this beautiful bit of tubing we call saxophone. Now, just before we steam into all that malarkey, <laughs> let me tell you that my new Improvisation Mastery course is coming up. It's gonna cover all this in way more depth than I can possibly do on YouTube. Wherever your improvising journey is, it's gonna take you as far as you wanna go. It can take you from zero to hero, or it can take you from somewhere around this level that we're at now into playing great lines over standards and chord changes. So look out for that, that's gonna be out in June. It's gonna be an absolute winner of the course, I promise you, I'm working on it right now. Also, as always, you can check out my free one hour saxophone success masterclass while you're waiting for improvisation mastery. There's some stuff about soloing in there, there's some stuff about gear, having making a great sound, and lots of other aha moments that you never realized about saxophone. So go and check out that Saxophone Success Masterclass. And now let's crack on with the lesson. I love Sonny Rollins so much, I named my son after him. That's how much I rate Sonny Rollins. And he is the most melodic and interesting and creative player you're ever gonna hear on chord changes, in my opinion. So what I figured today is to answer your question, we're gonna look at what he does because why can't you learn from what Sonny Rollins does instead of just learning it from a book? And that is the power of transcription. His masterwork, St. Thomas, we're gonna look at that solo and we're gonna look at the same portion in every chorus that he plays, namely the three, six, two, five. Now, let's take a look and listen to the first phrase. Here we go. Now there's a common misconception that learning your chord tones is gonna to make your solo sound very blocky and unmelodic. But in almost every phrase that Sonny Rollins plays, he almost exclusively uses the chord tones. So it's not don't use chord tones, it's how do you use those chord tones. So let's look at this first phrase that Sonny Rollins plays. So it's color coded. So the blue notes are related to the F sharp half diminished chord. And that is these notes. Then you get the notes of the B7 chord, which in this case is a B7 flat 13 flat 9. Now there's one chromatic passing tone, the A sharp, and then he goes into the E minor 7, which is almost perfectly outlines an E minor 9 chord with one passing tone. Now what you'll notice at this point is a really key point which is gonna end up 
something that we're going to make a note of in the summary. And that is, one of the ways of sounding really interesting and melodic through chord changes is to throw the harmonic rhythm, delay the chord, and anticipate the chord. And in this example, Sonny Rollins delays that A7 by two whole beats. So when he gets to the A7, he comes down this A7, flat 13, flat 9 chord. resolving to the D. So almost completely chord tones with a chromatic passing note, that's what CPN means, chromatic passing note, and a diatonic passing note, that's what DPN means. Apart from that, it's all chord tones. And yet, it's such a fantastic line, isn't it? And one of the reasons that is such a fantastic line is, he is following all the guide tones. Now guide tones, you may remember, are the third and seventh of each chord, which alternate, and the fifth and ninth of each chord, which alternate. They alternate from one chord to the next, creating a new line. So that gives you two new lines, well, four new lines. You've got two lines of thirds and sevenths, and you've got two lines of fifths and ninths. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go and check out the video linked above right now which is the fourth part of my Guide to Harmony series, and that'll explain all about guide tones. But what Sonny Rollins does, especially at the end of this phrase, if you look at the last measure, he goes from the F sharp, which is the ninth of E minor seven, to the F natural, which is the flat 13 of A7. Now, typically, you'd expect the next note to be an E, to resolve onto the D major seven, you'd resolve onto an E. And that's what people like Hank Mobley um, and Sonny Stitt do the whole time. So first point of interest, look for those guide tone lines and pick them out. And remember that you can delay and anticipate the harmonic rhythm of where the chords are when you play them. Right, let's look at the second chorus and see what he plays this time. <laughs> Once again, you can see those chord tones marked out in color. The blue for the F sharp minor seven, flat five. The red for the B7, which in this case is a B7 sharp nine and flat nine. You can see that the D and the C at the top, that's the sharp nine and the flat nine. There's a passing tone on the A sharp. And then you get this E minor nine chord tones. Now, see where it says CPN with the bracket, the chromatic passing tones? That's just a kind of tenorish bebop thing that he does. Don't get too concerned about the harmony on that B flat C, A flat bit. And then he extends the E minor seven again before going down to the C sharp guide tone of the A9 chord, straight up the arpeggio and down to resolve into F sharp of the D major. So this is what the second phrase sounds like broken into chord tones. <laughs> So, as you can see, he's pushing the chords here and there. The E minor seven extends a bit, and then the A seven is that bit later. So that's what we saw in the first phrase as well. Mainly guide tones. He's focusing on those guide tone lines and he's hitting those chord tones. Let's now move on to the third phrase, the third chorus. The same three, six, two, five, F sharp half, B seven, E minor seven, A seven, and see what he does this time. This one, this is just pure Sonny Rollins genius, isn't it? This is insane. Who does that? 
Come on, who does that? That is just insanely good. And it's just the flat five, the root, and then the root up the octave of the chord. Who says you can't sound creative and fantastic using just the chord tones? That's amazing. And then the only note he uses from the B7 is the third. He's got a lovely bit of space there, and then he's delaying the E minor seven, and then just straight down a normal A9 to resolve once again on the third of the D major. So start making a note of where he resolves each time. What you'll see Sonny Rollins doing is mixing up which extensions he uses on his dominant chords. On the A7, in the first phrase, he used flat 13, flat nine. The second time he used a normal A9. The third time he's used A9 again, and later on we'll see that he mixes up with different extensions on that same dominant chord. So that's another thing that you can do to make your lines more interesting. Don't just play the same flat nine every time, mix it up, have a natural nine, have a flat nine, have a sharp five. These are the kind of things that are gonna make your lines really melodic and interesting when you improvise. I do have to not call out, but slightly emphasize this point to you guys. You must know your chord tones inside out. So don't start saying I can't make interesting and melodic lines when I'm improvising on chord changes unless you can rip through those, those chord tones, the notes, the chord notes for each chord without even thinking about it. Then you can start throwing them around. Now, the easiest way to learn that would just be doing this. That's just playing the simple guide tones for F sharp minor seven flat five, B seven, E minor seven, A seven, D major seven, which is the sequence that we're working on today. Make sure that you're all over those notes before you start trying to make it, you know, hitting those juicy notes. You've really got to know the basics and the main guide tones. Those thirds and sevenths are much more important to know really deep before you start going to the fifths and ninths. So if I just do a quick solo, and jumble up those chord tones, it's gonna to sound like this. So make sure you're really fluent with those chord tones before you start doing the really juicy stuff and that's gonna give you a real good foundation. Right, let's now move on to the fourth phrase, the fourth chorus of Sunny Solo and see what he does there. This is another absolute classic Sonny Rollins creative right down the low end of the horn. And that tone he gets, oh my God, that Sonny Rollins tone is insane. So it's really quite simple. The chord tones, A and F sharp, and then C, that's just an F sharp half. And then he plays the roots which is B7 and then the octave and then A and F sharp, just simple B7 chord tones. Now this time, there's two ways we're looking at it. You might say he's playing an E minor seven flat five or that he starts at E7 and then throws in the A7 flat nine really early. And then he's got that wonderful phrase at the end to go back into D. <laughs> Those crazy repeated notes. This is the kind of interest that you're looking for in your solos. You gotta throw out some really interesting ideas, rhythmic, harmonic, but in this case, range. He goes right to the very lowest note on the saxophone. And remember the previous phrase, he went right to the highest note. So in two choruses, you've gone from top F sharp to low B flat. So that's a fantastic tool to remember when you're improvising. Get right over the whole instrument. Let's now look at the fifth chorus and see what he does with that fifth phrase on that three, six, two, five. Here we go.
Okay, this fifth chorus is fantastic. He's almost quoting a night in Tunisia, isn't he? But instead of going to the uh, B flat to B, he goes from the F natural to the F sharp. So it's not quite a night in Tunisia, but it's obviously that's what he's quoting. And around about this time, that's also a tune that he used to play a lot live. So I'm sure it must have been in the forefront of his mind. Um, and then when he gets to the A7, you hear this A7 altered, which is a B flat melodic minor scale. And this really throws the rhythm with these lovely syncopated offbeats. Now remember before he was just doing A9 with a natural nine. Now he's using the flat nine, the sharp nine, the sharp five and the sharp 11. This is an absolutely fantastic phrase. It's so angular and so rhythmic and punchy and so quirky and individual. That's exactly the sort of stuff that you want to be playing if you want to make your lines interesting as you play over chord changes. So before I summarize a lot of the things that make Sonny Rollins such a genius and a lot of the lessons that you can learn in your changes playing, there's one more phrase, one more bonus phrase, which is actually in his second solo that I cannot miss out. This is what it sounds like. This, for me, is the absolute epitome of playing chord tones, but making it hauntingly beautiful, melodic, interesting, creative. I mean, this is just such a good line. That is the perfect example of those guide tone lines that I'm talking about. So. The first, the first time he goes up to the A, C, da, 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 G, B flat. So you can see these beautiful lines flowing through the chords, which not only outline the harmony, but give a really lovely sense of melody, the way it goes up, down, and you can see the bottom note goes down and then it goes up to the, oh, it's just the best, isn't it? Oh, what can you say about Sonny Rollins? I'm such a ridiculous Sonny Rollins fanboy. <laughs> okay, let's summarize. What we can learn from these five, well, six actually, Sonny Ron's phrases and how you can put it into your playing. So what makes Sonny Rollins' lines on this 36251 so fantastic? Number one, the rhythm. How often do I tell you about rhythm? Well, this is the greatest example of rhythm. He throws around the offbeats. He mixes up not just eighth note lines, he uses triplets. And he doesn't always play at the same part of every chord. So sometimes he leaves gaps in the middle of the 3625, another time he plays all the way over it. So the harmonic rhythm is another thing that he uses. Sometimes he puts chords early, sometimes he misses chords out, sometimes he puts them late. So these are all fantastic ways of making your solo more interesting. Make your rhythm more interesting. Make the rhythms choppy, offbeat. Remember that phrase he goes, ba 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 ba. I mean, that is just rhythmic. It's like he's playing drums. So you can incorporate much more interesting and distinctive rhythms into your solos. The second thing he does is he uses the whole range of his instrument from low B flat to high F sharp. And that's something that you can do as well. You get the real growly low stuff. You get the really um, screaming high stuff. It's gonna add so much interest to your lines when you use the whole range of the horn. These guide tone lines that flow through the chord changes are gonna help give you a real horizontal direction to your lines, which is effectively over vertical chords. So look for those horizontal guide tones, which are gonna inform your lines and make them really beautiful and melodic. And finally, don't be afraid to be bold. Just be creative and really bold. Throw in something really wild that's just right off the top of your head that's really gonna get your listeners' attention instead of just do 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 you know, running eighth notes the whole time. Throw in something which is gonna really, you know, jerk people awake, <laughs> just like Sonny Rollins does. Now for your homework. 
Your homework, if you want to create more melodic and interesting lines through chord changes is, number one, learn your chord tones. Now, when I say learn your chord tones, I mean learn the arpeggio for every chord type, every popular chord type. So major seven, minor seven, dominant seventh, minor seven, flat five. And you want to have all those chord types in every key. That is basic just an absolute given if you want to improvise on chord changes like standards and you want to be fluent at it. So many people um, so many people struggle because the chords seem to come too fast and by the time they've worked out the notes, the chord's gone, they've missed the boat and you get lost in the chord changes. If that's you, say I. <laughs> I can say I because that 100% used to be me, I can tell you. But I took the time I got down to it and I learned every chord turn, so you've got to do that as well. No excuses, I can't do the work for you. You should just be able to rattle off any chord immediately without thinking about it as soon as you see the chord symbol. And that goes the same for all your major scales, of course. Preferably your melodic minors and all your harmonic minors as well. These are just basics that a lot of people miss out. All your scales have to be fluent, absolutely instantly fluent, and the same for your chord tones. You need to be aware of which are the most important notes to connect from chord to chord, and that is going to be your guide tone lines. So often in fantastic solos, you'll see the seventh of the minor seven go to the third of the dominant seventh, and so often you'll see the seventh of the dominant seven go to the third of the one chord, the major seven. You need to emphasize these lines. And once you've really got a great feel for that, you need to start looking at the upper extensions, the fifths and the ninths, those lines. That's how you really get fantastic, interesting lines that spell out the chord changes and sound melodic. And finally, you must transcribe solos to learn. Just like I've didn't done for you today, these six lines, you can learn so much from six phrases of music. Imagine how much you can learn from a whole solo. Go to somebody absolutely amazing that you love, like Sonny Rollins, Sonny State, John Coltrane. If you want to play chord changes, Charlie Parker, go to the people who are the absolute master geniuses. Transcribe the solo, get a bit of software, slow it down. I've got a whole video series, three videos actually, how to transcribe, which will be linked up there now. Take your time, start with something quite simple and look at what's happening. Learn from the greatest players who've ever played the music. Don't learn from me. I mean, I'm really glad you're watching this video, but learn from Sonny Rollins, learn from Charlie Parker, because they'll teach you so much that you won't see in a book. So I hope today's lesson has been of some assistance to you. If nothing else, it's shown you the future of what you can work on and how you can create those more interesting melodic lines through chords by studying the masters and then folding it into your own playing by repetition until you can make it your own. Next week is going to be our performance video. Remember a few weeks ago I played a ballad for you? Well, this week I'm going to play something a bit more up-tempo, Green Dolphin Street, where I can show how you put all these concepts together that we're learning about with improvising into one performance. So I hope you enjoy that. As always, thank you so much if you've bought me a coffee. I really, really appreciate it. You guys are so kind. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if you didn't watch it already, don't forget to check out uh, the live video I did from a few days ago where I look at all your uh, viewers' videos and I give you all tips on how to improve. It's like everyone gets a mini lesson. It's fantastic. And I'll be doing that every month. So until next time, practice hard, practice smart, and enjoy your music. See you later. God's sake. Okay, I'm rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Public service interruption there from my wife Mel.